To those who will live forever, we have heard God calling us to Jesus Christ and we believe God. We know this by his word, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Beloved, we are his and he will never leave us nor forsake us. We will live with him forever, and forever has begun in our lives the moment we believed on Jesus Christ. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Listen to Paul, who speaks through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among the brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Our Father and his Son, Jesus have unconditionally blessed us with eternal life, nothing less. Our Lord's word is truth. We have heard Jesus. He knows us. We follow him. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life and this is the record that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son he that has the son has life and he that doesn't have the Son has not life. These things I have written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. What a Savior we have in Jesus. Through him, once saved, always saved, is a God-enforced truth. We believe the beautiful gospel of grace. So many of us have walked the path of doubt as to our salvation after conduct, unbecoming a saint, or hearing some Bible message from a false teacher. And because of our lack of Bible study and the failure of good counsel around us, we have found ourselves between a rock and a hard place without peace and without security, which the Lord has given us when we believe in the form of the Holy Spirit in us, who will never leave us and never forsake us, and who has sealed us unto eternity when the Lord calls us home, whether we be in the grave or whether we be walking on the earth. 
Beloved, the demons are jumping up and down when they hear these kind of preachings of perfection and sinlessness. And Satan makes his accusations to the Father. But Jesus is up there. He's our high priest. And he's saying to his Father, Father, my blood is on this one. And the Father says, it's done. I see you, my son. Thus, beloved, we are cautioned to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we are fully confident. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And I add, beloved, depart from false teachings, quick and fast, because you're in sin. Beloved, knowing how much God our Father and Jesus Christ love us, and he who died for us and all our sins, what is our rightful life service but for God and his glory in the fruit of his divine limitless love by the Holy Spirit in truth and in the life we received when we first believed this being so throughout our days the great God and Savior the Lord is our shepherd and we are free we are truly free to live a life through him in us I am the good shepherd the Good Shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But now that you have been set free from sin and become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. Beloved, to be set free from sin does not mean that you're sinless, as some teach. It means that the judgment of sin is no longer in us. You understand that? There's a big difference. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Look how he loves us. His blood has washed us from the filth of the world and our sins even if but for a brief moment we have fallen for the lie that Christians don't sin, the Bible makes very clear the following. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. But the just, beloved, shall live by his faith. Our confidence is in God and his word, not ourselves, and not these preachers, not even me. You test the Spirit, and you test the fruit, and see that it's good by the word of God. We live by this faith that Jesus has given us and died for to give us. We can truly live Jesus Christ in us. The faith works for his glory. And we know from scriptures which do not lie the following. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Beloved, we are saved by faith kept by faith, and we live by faith. And our faith will be tried many times, but faith will always be vindicated. Our faith is our title deed to eternal life. And Jesus is that life, beloved. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And this we can be sure, by his grace, his great love for us, we will live forever and be at home with him one day.
Who is it that condemns? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything created shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Beloved, Maranatha, the Lord is coming.